Um, so today we're going to continue and finish um, the topic of arithmetic circuits. If you remember on Tuesday, um, we introduced headers, um, full headers, half headers, and then we um, build them up to be uh, multiple bit headers. Then we talked about subtraction circuits, and we um, looked at several ways to approach subtraction, and we came up with this horrible circuit that can do both addition and subtraction, uh, but it had to do um, to do some checkups on the um, borrow from the subtractor circuit and then apply a correction step and we said if there's a correction we stick a minus sign at the beginning but um, we didn't actually say how you stick a minus sign in um, in a computer when we write it on paper no problem we just put a little minus sign at the beginning when we talk about a, com a computer or a digital system we need to come up with a way to do it so in this lecture um, that's going to be the main topic, how do we represent positive and negative numbers in a digital system. I'll introduce to you a couple of different ways of doing this um, and we'll see what the benefits of using one of those systems. Um, okay. So we want to um, be able to represent positive and negative numbers in binary, we want to be able to do arithmetic operations on them, subtractions and additions, and we want it to be as easy as we can make it. So for a starter, let's define how do we actually represent negative numbers, how do we put that minus sign? Well, let's define that the most significant bit of our number will be um, our, our, um, our sign for the number. So if it's going to be a zero, we'll act as a, a plus sign, if it's a 1, it's going to be a negative number. So it's enough to look at the most significant bit to determine whether this is a positive or a negative number. Now there's a few different ways uh, we can actually then represent those negative numbers. We can use what's called sign magnitude or we can use sign complements. And for that, that one actually splits into two different ways. We can do it in 1's complement and 2's complements. So let me show you uh, what each one of them uh, means. For sine magnitude uh, method, the most significant bit will represent the sine of the number, so 0 for a plus, 1 for a minus. The rest of the bits will just be the regular binary representation that we know um, how to read. So we separate the most significant bit, interpret that as a sine, the rest of the um, bits will just convert to decimal as we would any other day, and then um, stick either plus or minus sign. For example, um, let's take two 8-bit examples. Obviously, the top one is a positive number because we look at the sign and it's a zero. The bottom one is a negative number um, just by looking at this. So we will, for a starter, separate um, the most significant bit. Now this one here will just convert it into um, decimal as usual and I always do write the places just because it helps me convert it. 1 plus 8, 9 plus 16, 27, 25. 16 plus 9, 25. So we have a plus 25. The other one we'll just interpret it as well. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 32 is 37. And we look at the sign bit and we say this is a minus 37. Both of them are in base 10, obviously. Pretty simple. So interpreting those numbers for us is going to be fairly simple. There's nothing um, really new here except that um, the sign bit. But it turns out that trying to do arithmetic in a digital system for um, sign magnitude method tends to be quite um, complex. And this is because our hardware need to first of all look at the most significant bit, decide if it's a plus or a minus, therefore decide whether we're adding or subtracting then choose the correct circuitry, like we've seen before, um, that either do addition or subtraction, then if it's, if it's a subtraction, we have to check the borrow, and then apply correction, and it gets to be really, really messy. So even though we can interpret it quite easily, computers, not so much. 
So let's um, see what the alternatives are. So the other way of doing um, negative numbers in binary are what's called signed complements. And in signed complements we can uh, try to use one of two systems that we've learned in, um, on Tuesday, either the ones complements or the twos complements. Now both of these systems will make the most significant bit the sine bit as well, just like we had in the sine magnitude. Because if you think about the fact that um, the most significant bit of positive numbers is zero, then taking um, the inverse of all the bits for one's complement will make the most significant bit a one, therefore um, the sine bit will be one for negative. Now, as it turned out, and I'll show you in the next few slides, when we use two's complements arithmetic, we can actually use the same circuitry for addition and subtraction, um, similar to the circuit we used just for addition at the beginning of last lecture. This simplifies things a lot. It saves up on hardware. Um, and this actually became the convention of how we use um, to represent negative numbers in binary. So we will end up using two's complements in general. But before we do, let me introduce to you um, the ones complement and uh, the twos complement. So by the definition um, that I explained before, uh, we have a table of all the three systems that's possible. The sine magnitude, and you can sort of split uh, the positive and the negative numbers. The positive numbers in all um, three systems, and this is a three-bit example there, will just be as usual. So uh, we will use zero uh, for positive uh, sine bit, and then the other bits as usual in all uh, three systems. It's the same. Now for sine magnitude, um, we said we'll just invert uh, the most significant bit to put the minus sign, and then use the magnitude of the number to represent the number. In one's complements, we will take the corresponding, um, invert all the bits, or take the one's complements. For example, uh, plus three will become minus three by inverting all the bits. Plus two, zero, one, zero, become minus two by inverting all the bits, and so on. This has the effect of actually giving us both plus zero and minus zero. Is it a good thing? It might be. Some uh, mathematical systems do require plus minus zero, uh, but usually we won't need it. In two's complement, we'll take the uh, positive numbers, take the two's complement to them. And remember, we said we take the two's complement by inverting all the bits and adding a one. And you can verify that this is what uh, we're doing there. For example, um, the number plus three will invert all the bits add one to it to get a minus three. In this way, zero only have one representation. Because if you try to invert all the bits for zero and add one, you will end up with three zeros again. The benefit is that now we're getting um, an extra representation for another number, which is the minus four there. Now let's talk about the ranges of numbers we can represent when we talk about sine numbers. If we had um, n bits with unsigned numbers, like we um, talked about up until this week, we know that we can represent decimals of anywhere between zero and 2 to the power of n minus 1 for unsigned uh, binary numbers. When we um, start talking about signed binaries, we sort of, um, and in the two's complements usually, we sort of take this range and then split it roughly half and half between the positive numbers and the negative numbers. So the range, and you can look at it from this example here, in general will always be anywhere from minus 2 to the power of 
n minus 1, 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. And let's um, put some real numbers. Oh, it's a 2 there. Let's put some real numbers into this. If we had an 8-bit number, then we can represent anywhere between minus 2 to the power of 7, which is minus 128, 2 to the power of 7 minus 1, which is 127. As, as opposed to if it was an unsigned number, when we represent anywhere between 0 and 255. So it depends um, what system you, um, you're using, whether you're presenting a number with an unsigned method or with a signed uh, two's complement method. Now, as I said, it turns out that two's complements um, is a preferable um, method to use to represent binary signed numbers. Um, and the main reason for this is that we can use the same hardware um, to do our arithmetics. Now, when we um, when we want to add two numbers, that's one of them is negative. We'll just use um, the two's complement representation and we just add them as usual in the same hardware. And I'll show you examples that it does work. We will discard the carry out uh, from this addition. And most of the time, we might um, have a look at it in certain cases to detect overflows. This will come um, later in the lecture. For example, and I have several different cases here. I add other two positive numbers, uh, one negative, one positive, then uh, one positive, one negative, and two negatives. And hopefully, in all cases, I will get the correct answer. So if I wanted to add 6 and 13, I know the answer in decimal should be 19. Hopefully, that's what I'll get in binary as well. 0 plus 1, 1, 1. 0 carry 1, 0 carry 1, 0. Hopefully this is plus 19. 1 plus 2 plus 16 equals plus 19. That works really well. Now, is this minus 6 in 2's complement? What is that table with, you know, the 8 bits? Oh dear, that's only good for 3 bits. So we do need to figure out whether this is um, minus 6 in binary. We said to figure out the negative of a number. We'll take the regular number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then take the two's complement of this, and this is obviously uh, plus six, to determine the negative um, equivalent. So inverting all the bits will be one, 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 zero, zero, one, plus one will give me one, 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 zero, one, zero which is what I had up there. So minus 6 plus 13, I'll just add them together. 0 plus 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 carry 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 1, and I do discard this um, carry out for now. And this is, hopefully, um, you can see this is plus 7, as expected, in decimal. What about the other two examples? So I want to try and add a positive number with a negative number. And take my word for it that this is minus 13. Obviously, you can uh, calculate yourself. 
one, zero carry one. Is this minus seven in um, two's complement? Maybe. Let's leave it at that. Hopefully it is minus seven. Let's try to add two negative numbers. So we have two negative numbers. The most significant bit is one. Um, carry one. Carry one, zero, carry one. Sorry, this is one carry one, one carry one, one, and we discard this extra one. And hopefully, this is minus 19 in decimal. Now, in those two examples, I've shown you two negative numbers, but how do we know uh, whether they represent the right number? Well, there's two ways to interpret or to convert the negative um, binary numbers into decimal. The first one is to take the negative number, take the two's complements of it to get uh, its positive equivalent, convert it as usual to decimal, and then that will give you the magnitude or the positive magnitude of that number, and then stick a minus sign at the front of this decimal. The other way to do it is to take the negative number and obviously I'll give you examples. Convert it as usual, as you would convert any binary number to um, decimal, but then subtract the most significant bits value instead of adding it together to the rest of the number. Again, I'll show you an example. Both of these methods will give you the same result, or should give you the same result. Let's take an 8 bits number. Obviously, it's a negative number because the most significant bit is 1. To take, um, to interpret what's the magnitude of this or what's the value of this in decimal, I'll try the two methods. The first method is to take the two's complements and we'll invert all the bits and add 1 to it. which will give me 1 plus 2, 4, 8, 16, that will be 19, plus 19. Now, because we start as a negative number, the original number would have been minus 19. The second method to convert is to convert this as I would, as usual, but instead of adding the most significant bit, subtracting it. So I have my um, binary places, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 1, 28, 256. No. I skipped something. 64, yeah. I knew something didn't quite work out. 32, 64, 128. And then I will add 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 32 plus 64 minus 128. So the most significant bit, I will subtract it instead of adding it. And this will be 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 8, 13 plus 32, 45 plus 64 is 109. Minus 128, 109 minus 128, is it minus 19? Minus 19. And I get the same result. Now which, which method should you use? Either one. I, um, I personally am used to the first method, so whenever I see um, a negative two's complement number, I take two's complement of it and then put a minus sign at the beginning. Um, some people find it easier to use a second method. Either one that you, um, you want to use, you will get the same result. Now you can use these methods to then verify that this is indeed minus 7 and this is indeed minus 19.
Now, I said that the reason why you want to use two's complement is because it makes the hardware really easy, um, especially for subtractions. Now, the idea that uh, we can do subtraction using two's complement is that we use the same header circuit, and instead of doing subtraction, we will negate the second operand and then um, add the two operands together. And this works because when I want to do A minus B, it's really the same as doing A plus minus B. So we'll take the two's complements of B to negate it to become minus B and add those two things together. Again, I will um, discard any carryouts from the most significant bit after the addition. So, as an example, I want to subtract minus 6 minus minus 13. So I have um, those two negative numbers. You can see the most significant bit is 1. Now, I could have tried to do this using subtraction, um, but we said we don't like subtraction circuits. We rather do addition. And therefore, I will convert. Well, I'll leave the first um, number as it is and take the two's complement of the second number. Well, what's two's complement of minus 13? Let's see. Um, and I get all the bits and add one. I've done it one step. So I add those two together. 0 plus 1. 1, 1, 1, 0 carry 1, 0 carry 1. And I discard this um, carry out. And I get plus 7, which is really good because this is the correct answer. Now, when we want to implement in hardware, we can use the same hardware for both adder and subtractor. And this is a really um, nice, ways, nice way of actually performing this. We'll take a regular um, but, um, carry ripple adder that we've um, came up on Tuesday. And we feed the two A and B um, numbers to it. Now, the X OR gates act as a selective inverters and are controlled by this S signal. The S signal will tell us whether we want to do addition or whether we want to do subtraction. If S is zero, then we want to do addition. And this whole circuit just collapses down to the multi-bit error that we've seen on Tuesday. Because anything x odd with zero will just stay as it is. So we'll just let those b's propagate through. The a's are connected directly to the full error. The carry in, which is connected um, to s, will be zero. And this whole thing just becomes a ripple carry error, uh, in this case, for four bits. Now the interesting part starts when we have s equals 1 to do subtraction and what we want to do is to take the two's complement of b. Now taking the two's complement is inverting all the bits, no problem. We have now those x ors act as inverters so all of those uh, B's will be inverted, but we also want to add 1. Now the nice part about this is that this add 1 will, become from, will come from our carry path. So we'll essentially taking um, the inverse of all the bits in B and then um, pushing a 1 through the carry path and this will have the effect of inverting all the bits plus 1. And now this circuit becomes a subtractor which is much, much easier um, than the circuit I've shown you on Tuesday that we had to separate um, 
the adders and the subtractors and then select which one. This is a nice little circuit with only the addition of those um, XOR gates. All right. Um, is this clear so far? Take that as a yes. Now, when we talked about unsigned numbers before, um, up until you know the beginning of this week, if we wanted to go from um, a certain number of bits, let's say four bits and we then wanted to represent the same number with more bits, then we would just stick zeros at the beginning, um, it will not change the value of the number, um, and then we can use the same value of the number with more bits. We do have to be a little bit careful when we talk about sign numbers, because now the most significant bit actually tells us um, the sign of the number. If we took a negative number and we just added zeros to the most significant bit, will make the uh, number a positive number, which is not what we want. We want to keep the same number. So if we want to extend the number of bits for a sign number, we do what's called um, the most significant bit extension. We'll just take the most significant bit of the number and we'll just duplicate it as many times as we want um, to extend the number of bits. If it was a positive number, like here, we'll just extend the most significant bit. <laughs> so this will take the plus 7 from 4 bits to the same plus 7 representing 8 bits. For the minus 7, we can't just stick um, zero at the beginning because this will make it a positive number but we can just extend this one here and duplicate as many times as we want and this will preserve the same value minus 7 as an 8 bits number and let me convince you that this is still a minus 7 I will invert all the bits and add 1 and then add 1 to it and this is uh, the equivalent uh, positive number 7 and this is essentially why it works when you keep extending the ones in the magnitude you're just adding zeros so you're not actually changing the value of your number Now up until now I said any time we add two numbers we just discard um, the carry out which sound, sounded reasonable to some extent but essentially what a carry out tells us is that we want to be able to represent the result in more bits than what we have so now we define the concept of overflow and overflow means that we need one more bit to represent uh, the result, the sum of, the two, of adding the two numbers than the number of bit, bits that we have. For example, if we take two 8-bit numbers and with 8-bit numbers uh, we can represent the range minus 128 to 127 as I've shown before and I want to add the two numbers 70 plus 80. Now we know that in decimal this will result in 150. 150 will be out of the range of, um, of the, that we've got for 8 bits signed representation. Let's see what actually happens when you try to do it. So we'll take um, 70 plus 80, try to add them together. So no carry. Just by looking at this 8-bit number, I can tell this is a negative number because the most significant bit is 1. 
So I already know that I've got the wrong answer. Because adding two positive numbers cannot or should not give you a negative number. So how can I tell that this um, caused an overflow? My carryout was zero, so that doesn't quite tell me much. We define the overflow to be the XOR of the carry in to the most significant bit and the carry out from the most significant bit. Now if this um, result of this XOR will be um, 1, that indicates that our result is incorrect and we need to fix for it. And this is a simple circuit that will um, actually yield this overflow um, signal. We will take the carry in to the most significant bit, which is this one here. X or with whatever came out. If they're not the same, that implies an overflow. Now there's a reason why I've called um, this V and this one C, which we'll see in the next couple of slides. The output C will just be um, the carry out of the whole other thing. Now if we tried to add two unsigned numbers, so forget the whole um, most significant bit being signed and all that. And we tried, um, and you can think about the decimal equivalent, and we tried them together, add them together, and we do get a carry out. That means that we do want to try and represent the number with more bits than what we've got. But that was true for the unsigned case. And as we just saw, um, in the signed case, the carry out does not give us good indication, but whether we have to check the carry in and the carry out. So there's two separate cases to detect overflow, depending on whether you're talking about unsigned or signed representation. For the unsigned case, we will look at the carry out from the whole header. If it's a zero, it means there hasn't been an overflow, the result is correct. If there is a carry out, so I'm talking about this case here, that implies we would have needed more bits to represent our result and therefore um, there's been an overflow and the result is incorrect, not for this many bits. For sign numbers, we define the overflow signal that if the overflow signal is zero, it means the result is fine, no problems at all. If it's a one, that tells us there's been an overflow and your result is incorrect, you must fix for it. Now, oh no. So um, we talk about those C and V signals. In addition to those two signals, I can define a couple of more signals, the N and the Z. And this is what we'll call the status flags. From any, um, the, from any um, addition operation, we can use four different um, status signals. One is N, stands for negative, tells us whether the result is negative. The other, Z, zero, a flag that will tell us whether the result is zero. And then we have the C and the V flags, which are the ones I just um, defined before. Now what is this good for? Well, those arithmetic circuits, those errors, usually sit in the heart of a um, computer system in the arithmetic logic unit. By calculating um, these flags, 
we can actually um, tell a lot of information about the relationship between the numbers. For example, this is one out of a few different examples. If you want to compare in the computer whether two numbers, which one's greater than the other? How do you compare in a computer? I mean, you can look at this and say, oh well, I can see that this number is larger than this one. How do you get a computer to do it? You subtract. You try and subtract one from the other. If the result is positive, you know that the first one uh, was larger than the other, when the second one, if the result is negative, clearly the second one is larger than the uh, first one. And to look and to check if something is negative, you don't actually care about the actual result, but you can um, look at your end flag, the negative flag, and this will symbolize whether the result would be negative or positive. Now, to calculate those um, status flags, we can use some really, really um, easy addition to the hardware. The end flag, the negative flag, is essentially just the most, the most significant bit of your sum. If it's a zero, it's a positive number. If it's a one, it's a negative number. The zero flag, we need a circuit that detects whether all the bits are zero in the sum because that means that the number is zero. And this is just a simple NOR gate because if all of them will be zero, this is when your zero flag will be uh, flagged, asserted. If there's at least one bit that's one, um, the Z flag will become zero. We said the C flag is the carry out, is just connected um, to the carry out signal from the header circuit. And the V flag, the overflow, will just be the carry in to the most significant bit, XORed with the carry out. And let's take an example of calculating those four flags. And you can always calculate the four flags for any um, addition or subtraction operation. So we have some random um, addition of two numbers. We'll just try them together. Carry zero. So one carry zero. Zero carry one. And one carry zero. So we want to calculate our four flags and Z, C, and V. The N we said we'll just have a look at a most significant bit here. Well, it is a negative number, so my N will be a one. It's non-zero, obviously, because not all of them are zeros. Therefore, my zero flag is zero. The carry out from this uh, um, operation is zero. So the carry is zero. And the V flag is defined as the carry in for the, to the most significant bit X odd with the carry out. So we get zero X odd with one to get an overflow of one. Now let's see if it makes sense. Well, how do we interpret those two numbers? I didn't say whether they were signed or unsigned. They could either be two unsigned numbers, which means they are um, positive because we don't have negative numbers in unsigned. And therefore, the result is interpreted as an unsigned number as well. So we have two positive numbers added together to yield another positive number. And we check the C flag to see if there's been an overflow in an unsigned case. C flag is zero. There's not been an overflow. This is indeed the correct sum of those, of the, of those two numbers if they were unsigned. What if we interpret them as signed numbers? Well, they're both positive numbers because um, the most significant bit is zero. The result, however, is negative because the most significant bit is one. So we can sort of suspect already that something went wrong because 
two positive numbers added together should not give you a negative number. And in fact, the V flag does flag that there has been a problem if you interpret it as um, sign numbers. V tells us there's been an overflow, you must correct for this result because this is incorrect. Now, calculating those flags, um, as I said, it's fairly simple and it can tell you a whole lot um, about your operation. We will use those flags all the time when we come to um, 2142, when we talked about when we talk about embedded systems, most modern computers use other those set of four flags or some variation of them to do comparisons um, between numbers. Um, but for now, we, we will in 2142 we will talk more about different interpretation to these things. For now, you should be able to know how to figure them out, which is fairly simple. Um, and I think this is it for today's lecture.